Stone Cold Superfly, Fish Keep It Funkadelics, you watching Aqua Funk. That's right, the original UFO, unidentified funky object. I want to sing you a little song. Not the whole song, just a little song. Some of y'all might remember, sing along with me. Don't go chasing waterfalls. Please stick to the rivers and the lakes that you used to. Okay. That's enough of that. But that song is very, very important to the subject that I'm talking about today. Chasing waterfalls. Specifically, water parameters. That's right, water parameters. When you first started out, you got yourself a bottle of chlorine remover, bloop, 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 put it in your tank, you was ready to go. Fish were in your tank. Living, everything was great. But as you got deeper into the hobby, People started telling you, you need buffers and and, and, and chemicals and they, then you started learning about pH and KH and JH and KGs and ammonia, nitrate, nitrite, hard water, soft water, TD, um, what is that thing? Um, uh, DDT. years ago, 60 years ago, 70 years ago, years and years and years ago, people had aquariums and they didn't have all of this stuff. They had water and fish. So why is it that you need this stuff now? Here's the truth of the matter, you don't. You don't need it, okay? It's all a ploy, it's a gimmick to take your money. Not really, it's not a good, I mean, it, it does have validity in the hobby if you want to get really specific for instance let's go with let's go with ph you learned about ph oh you have this fish you need to have a ph of this you need to have a ph here's a chemical to put it in here's my problem with chemicals and chasing water parameters you got to continue to do that always when the truth of the matter is the majority of the fish that you find at your local pet stores will live just fine in the water that comes from your tap. And if they don't live fine in the water that comes from the tap, well, you know what fish not to get, okay? The most important thing about fish keeping, the most important behavior you can adopt in fish keeping is consistency. Keeping things the same as much as possible, food, water changes, all that stuff. Consistency is the key. So if you have to do something that you may not be able to do on a regular basis, which is like add chemicals to your tank to make your water higher or lower in pH or or, or, or any of that stuff. Or you, let me tell you a story. Let me tell you a story. <clears throat> that little total dissolve TDS meter, I bought me one of those. I used it for about a month and then threw it away. Let me tell you what total total devol dissolved solids. That is talking about how much things in your water that is not water. Okay. Now, ultimately, you want it to have just pure water in there. You want to have the the number as low as possible. And you get yourself a TDS meter and you put it in there. It tells you how much is in there. And then you look at it after you've had this tank running and healthy for a year. And you look at it, you're like, Oh my God, I'm killing my fish. Well, the truth is you're not killing a fish. The truth is, I'm going to tell you what happened. I started beating myself over the head trying to fix a problem that wasn't there. Okay? My fish were living fine in the water that it was. I just made it worse by scaring myself with this little meter. Well, look, would the fish live better if I controlled the total dissolved solids or I controlled the exact pH or I controlled the exact hardness or softness, probably. But if I, it, what happens if I can't keep that stuff up? You know what I mean? Well, then they suffer because you've just done a drastic change. You've been putting chemicals and doing all this crazy. You've gotten a 
RO machine, you know, RO, but you didn't buy any filters for it because you just, you forgot about it, whatever, and now the fish is suffering because you've adopted it, you've adapted it to live in this specific type of water and it didn't need it to begin with. Most fish you buy at the at the um, pet store are fine in the water that you're in. Now, if you have an incredibly low pH coming out your tap and you want to raise it, let's say, for instance, my water comes out, I got a well, it comes out at 6.8. So I know off the bat that anything you know, pretty much, I could put a whole bunch of stuff. Now, African cichlids, mm, I tell you what I would do. I would put crushed coral in there. It's a natural buffer that you don't have to add. It stays in your tank. Let's say you have high pH coming out your um your tap and you want to have something that takes a lower pH type water, like, you know, like autumns and stuff like that. Driftwood, plants, they stay in your tank. Keep away from the chemicals. Really, the only test you really need to know. These are the only tests you really need to know, especially as a first, as a beginner Aquarius. Ammonia tests, nitrite, and nitrate. Those are the only three. Okay. Now I know you want to do the best for your tank. You want to do the best for your fish, and the best thing to do, honestly, is consistency. Keep it consistent. That's all I really have to say about that. I appreciate you guys. You know, um, tuning in to, to get some some little knowledge on stuff like that, but you don't need all that crap. Um, maybe later on, if you want to get real specific and do a biotope, yeah, that stuff is important. But just to keep your fish healthy and happy, nah, you don't need it. Self, save yourself the money and the drama. Just be consistent. If you know you ain't gonna buy this stuff all the time, don't start it. Anyway. That's my little thing thing on water quality in your aquarium. I hope it helped. Until next time, take care of yourself, take care of your family, take care of your fish. TD, um, what is that thing? Um, uh, DDTs, or not the DDT, TD, TDDs, whatever. Fire. <laughs>